I'm a dumbass. Hey, wait, don't leave. I want to talk to you. I missed my chance. This looks like a church with a garage. You have a really nice house. Dad? I'm in here, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. Hi, Pumpkin. Are you sure about this gift? Yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. Suit yourself, here you are. I want to know what's in it, too. Why would you shake it if you know what it is? Thanks, sweetheart. You know me. I love these things. Now yours. What was it? Damn. It's an inventory item. Where did you get this? I thought we lost it. I found it when I was cleaning out the attic. Actually, it was inside your grandfather's chest. You should maybe take a look inside there. It'll take you back. I will. Thanks for the gift, Dad. I had a feeling you'd like it. Remember the stories he used to tell us? How can I forget? My favorite one was Paris, because of the occult twist he brought to it. Yours was the one in London, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, romantic and mysterious. There is one story he always avoided telling me, though. The one when he met Grandma. He never would talk about it. Was it not a fond memory? I'm sure it is, Pumpkin. But he could never talk about it. I think your grandfather lost someone close to him when he met your grandmother. And I guess it was too painful for him to recall. Shouldn't you just call her mom? Where'd he meet Grandma? He met her in Prague, I believe. Speaking of your grandmother, this year, can you get around to making her special holiday cookies? Please? I knew that was coming. Oh, they don't take long to make. I know, I'll make some, don't worry. Great. The stuff is already on the counter. What a surprise. I'm gonna have a look in the attic. Might bring back some good memories. Okay, sweetheart. I'll be in here. I get to learn about Grandpa. Is that, was that the gift? What? I have no idea what that is. It looks like a brooch or something. Oh well. No, before we go to the attic, we'll make cookies. <laughs> You're wearing bunny slippers! <laughs> that makes me happier than it should. Maybe Dad's trying to send me a message. Uh, I'll do them later. Trying. He flat out told you. That... Whatever. Run! Run in your... Wow, it's quiet in here. That's... Photo. Get the photo. I always look stupid in pictures. Especially this one. Me too. I feel you there. Why... Why are you wearing bunny slippers anyway? Did not let shoes in the house? Well, that's why it's quiet. You're actually playing music in this room. I thought it was background music. Umbrella! This might be helpful to get up into the attic. Sweet! It turned out I needed it when I just thought I might want it. I love when that happens. Maybe the flower, too! I don't know why, but I never liked that painting. Looks like a tiger. But I want the flower, you know. Maybe there's bees in the attic and you can lure them away. Everyone hates bees. Uh, it? There we go. <gasps> Screen saver! That is so retro. One of my grandfather's old paintings. It's from when he was in Paris, I think. I do not like it. That, that's not pleasant to look at at all. And this is not the attic. There's nothing else in here. Let's go. 
You are stuck on a chair. How did you ever make detective? <laughs> I hope this was your room. I hope that was your bear. Teddy and I used to be inseparable. Take him with you. You will need comfort soon. The closet? Ah, yes, the trap door to the attic. I can't reach it. What was the trick to opening that thing again? Oh, you could have just used the hangers right next to you, but whatever. <laughs> you really liked bears. You have bear hangers and everything. You know, if you're going to get comfortable, get go all the way. Get rid of the stockings, get a bathrobe, get put down your hair, and get some fucking coffee. Or, no, hot cocoa. It's winter. Hot cocoa. And I don't find anything to click yet. Alright, go back here then. Oh. No wonder. I can't see. Dad, I told you not to attach the record player to the... Fucking light bulb. Oh. Oh, it's the necklace. Okay, that's not too bad. That's bad. Not too bad. That's bad. Alright. This one is three left ones. Those three. Those three. Those three. Those three. Okay, so it mirrors each other. Take a look at the necklace. Diamonds with the heart in the middle. Alright. And this is not going to work out. needs to happen is you need to rotate twice without rotating anything else, which ain't gonna happen. Damn it. Fuck yes! Two years had passed since the strange case in Paris. I figured I'd best leave town and come here. Quieter, or so I thought. The case in Paris had stirred my passion for PI work again. I had to let go of my dream of being an artist. It wasn't bringing in as much dough as being a private dick. In all, there were five dead and two unaccounted for. So far, all the victims were prostitutes. I didn't know if I would take the case. To my surprise, this cop Skalnik had no beef about me snooping around his crime scene. Whoa! Your face is weird. It's very nice of you to let me have a peek. I'm Gustav McPherson. I'm a... Yes, a private detective. I'm familiar with your work, Mr. McPherson. I had no idea I was so popular. I've read about your case in Paris and the one in London. I'm Inspector Skalnik of the Prague Police. What the fuck is up with you? You got the same weird face, but you also got the long ass fingers. That is... I'm... Is this the fifth victim? Yes, she is officially. Supposedly, there are two missing. Supposedly? Yes, well, you know these women. 
They come and go often without telling anyone. And then they show up again like they never left. So I don't bother with disappearances. Okay, from what I gathered, left click con continues the story while right click is just personal information. Your fingers... I am so glad I can't see you talk. So you only bother when they turn up like this? I see. We have a knight in shining armor. If you want my advice, Mr. McPherson, you'd best return to the usual missing person cases or husband cheating mysteries. This is a waste of your time. I think you've just convinced me to take the case. Really, Mr. McPherson? The press will not even cover this story. No one wants to know about dead prostitutes. If they do write about it, it will be about the killer and the number of bodies and not the actual victims. The pimps care even less. They force their women to work even if there is a killer loose. No one wants to sit at a dinner table and talk about this. There is no glory in this case. Like I said, you should stick with what you know. I know you are full of shit and suspicious as hell and creepy looking. Do you mind if I ask you a few more questions? Not at all. Were all the victims prostitutes? Yes. Seriously, look at those fingers! Is the cause of death the necklace on her neck? Of course it is. So it's not the multiple stab wounds to her chest? No. Well, we aren't really sure. You're a dumbass, too. I am no longer threatened by you. Does she have any other significant wounds on her body? Yes. She has scars on her forearms, and she is eviscerated. Eviscerated? Yeah, evisceration is something we should know about. I cannot get over the creepiness of your curly fingers. I had never seen anything so horrible in my entire life. I'd only heard of horrors like this from the Ripper case in London. Oh my god. Were all the victims like this? Yes, they were all found like this. Are all the organs accounted for? I'm no doctor, Mr. McPherson. I have no idea. In the other cases, were there missing organs? Not that I'm aware of. Never make hand gestures again. Who's the coroner? Emil Corona. He works at the old chapel. He's very... Well, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Now it's your turn to share. Maybe you can tell me what you think happened. I think you're right about the cause of death. That slash across the neck was definitely it. The stabbings to her chest were done before the final blow to the throat. The defensive stab wounds on her arms reinforced this theory. What's bothering me, though, is the lack of blood at the crime scene. This probably indicates that she was murdered somewhere else, not here. Well, Mr. McPherson, I don't want to be rude, but... You have work to do, uh, of course. Thanks for sharing. It was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you, too. I had a feeling that the cooperation between Skalnik and me had just ended. He was testing me for some reason. I was left to fend for myself. Because he's a gray. Hmm. I completely forgot that a portion of this game takes place in the 20s. Who are you? Kazimir Stasek. He's been a good source of info on a couple of minor cases I had here in the city. Hello, my friend. Ah, Mr. McPherson. And how are you this dark evening? I can't complain. And how's my favorite boy in blue? Besides my eye and this horrible murder, everything's fine. Did everyone in the 20s have fingers like that? Oh, well, you look jollier and you remind me of Mario, too, so... I want to know more about you. How'd you get the Shiner? Shiner? Your black eye. How'd you get it? Oh, uh, I arrested a man last night and for some reason my eye hit this man's very large fist. Did you get sucker punched? Well, a little. My partner didn't have time to warn me. Everything happened so fast. I was helping the woman and I turned around to see if my partner was okay and wham! Next thing I knew, I was flat-faced on the sidewalk. <laughs> your fist must be just as huge, though. And what did the man do to deserve your undivided attention? He was harassing a young woman. 
So I asked him to stop, and then things got out of hand. The police are trying to find this animal. We're a little nervous when a man harasses a young woman these days. That's understandable. You speak in perpetual scream. I imagine you don't have anything more to give me? This time I'm afraid I have nothing for you, my friend. Everyone is more or less at a loss. You don't mind if I ask you a couple of questions anyway? Of course not. How long has this been going on? It started about three weeks ago. You didn't hear about it until now? No, I wasn't in town. I just got back. I was working a case outside the city. Someone called me to see if I could come back and help. Ah, the very beautiful Miss Ida Skalikova, I presume? Good guess. She's worried for her friends. I told her I'd see what I could do. Can you tell me about your new boss? Inspector Yuri Skalnik. He was given the case and got temporarily assigned to this district. He has a good reputation, but he doesn't share much information with us. He keeps to himself a lot. What? He doesn't trust you? Honestly, I don't know. Maybe he thinks we're incompetent or something. Maybe. But he'd be stupid to think so. Why, thank you, my friend. Yes, get on his good side and he won't use those hands to strangle you. Were all the victims' bodies dumped? Yeah, I believe so. But then again, I don't have much information, as I said earlier. Was there ever an eyewitness? No, nope, never. That's what bothered me the most. How was the killer getting around the city without being seen? Well, I should leave you to your work, and I have to see my client. Thanks for your input. You're welcome. Be careful. Will do. Uh, NPCs in this game... Fuck. Oh. No, go over there and talk to her. My Ida. The best gams in all of Eastern Europe. She's my angel and the love of my life. I met her on a small case I was working. She used to dance in the neighborhood cabaret. She was involved with the married man I was following. It was love at first sight. Hey, look at you all dolled up. Hi, sweetheart. I don't like it when you call me that. I didn't call you a doll. I said that you were... Never mind, I'm sorry. Good. Now have you talked to that useless inspector? Yes, I have. And I didn't get much from the meeting. Uh, I have a feeling that's not Grandma. Are you going to help us? Of course I will. Was there really any doubt? No, but you never know. When do you want to settle this? Now or later? No, I don't want money, Ida. Nonsense. You will accept our money. How much do you charge? Okay, listen. We'll settle this after the case, all right? Do you promise? Because we'll feel insulted if you don't accept our money. What was I supposed to do? Take money off these women? That's the last thing I wanted to do. Yes, I promise. I will charge you at the end of the case. Yeah, right. Well, if they're prostitutes, you can always get paid another way. What was her name? Who? The victim's name? Oh, her name was Frantiska. That's fancy. Were you close to her? Not as much as Milena, but yes, I knew her. Did she ever talk about a regular client or someone special? Not that I know of. Do you think Milena can answer a few questions? I guess. Let me ask her. Milena? Yes? This is my friend, the one I told you about. He's here to help us catch the man responsible. Do you think he can ask you some questions about Frantiska? Okay. I'll wait for you up the stairs, okay? Okay. I'll see you in a bit. You are either on drugs or you are a dog lady. Woof. I guess you're not a dog lady. Hello, Milena. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm here to help stop this from ever happening again. I thank you, sir. Not a lot of people would help women like us. Oh, you're crying. Well, I feel like an asshole. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about Frantiska? No, that's fine. How long have you known Frantiska? 
Well, I've known her for a long time. We met in the orphanage when we were just little girls. Her uh, parents had died in a terrible accident. We became very close. We both left the orphanage never to return. We never liked the sisters. Ever since we left, we tried to survive on the streets, even changing cities. But we kept coming back here. Did she ever talk about someone new or special? No. It was not her style. Francisca would rarely take new clients. She had regulars and enough to allow her to survive. She would only take complete strangers if she absolutely needed to. Apollina is more like that. She always has a new rich client. You know, if there's no actual choices, just continue the conversation on its own. This is busy work. Did she ever have a client that had been violent with her? No. She only had clients she trusted. See? I can't even right click. How about you? Have you had any trouble with any of your clients? No, I'm like Francisca. I have only regular clients. If I'm on the streets, it's because I'm keeping my friends company. Were you close to any of the other victims? Well, there is one that was a common friend to Francisca and me. Her name was Anezka. No one's found her. She just disappeared one day. We honestly don't know what happened to her. And I knew the others only on a professional level. Did Anezka ever complain about any clients before she disappeared? Or did she ever talk about leaving? Well, we all talk about leaving. Who wants to live their life like this? But she never complained about anything. Anezka was like Apollina. She took on many clients. She left town a lot, but always came back with a broken heart. I hope she did find someone and left this place. Not likely. Where can I find this Apollina? She usually works the park. Rare are the girls who are allowed to enter it. She's very protective of her territory. That's what she calls it anyway. Francisca and me were allowed in because Apollina knew we didn't take strangers and pretty much had our own regulars. Anezka was Apollina's good friend, so she was allowed too. So we all kept each other company in the park. Maybe Apollina knows where Anezka is. I don't know. Well, thank you for answering my questions. It was a pleasure to meet you, even under these unfortunate circumstances. Well, it was nice to meet you, Mr. McPherson. I thank you for trying to help us. Trying? I haven't even started yet. If I have any more questions, how may I contact you? I'm usually in the park. Again, thank you. There's two types of music going on in the background, and they are very contradicting. Ida's an angel on Earth. She's the sweetest person I've ever met. I truly believe she doesn't have an angry bone in her body, even with the difficult childhood she had. A stepfather who molested her on a regular basis. Ida is always positive, and she's always willing to help the people who surround her. That's why she hired me to try and help. She has an undying optimism about life in general, and I love her for it. Hey. How is she? She's okay, I guess, under the circumstances. I'll go talk to her after. I love how the giant monologue about how wonderful she is just ends with hey. How have you been? I mean, are you feeling better? Yes, a little. It's not as bad as when you left for your case. Did you go see the doctor? No. Ida, go see him. It might be serious. I'm no doctor, but throwing up every day is not normal. Go see him. Okay, okay, I'll go see him. I don't throw up every day, you know. You always exaggerate. Yes, okay. But go see him as soon as possible. Every form of fiction, throwing up if you're a woman means you're pregnant. It's just how it is. Tell me, where can I find Emil Corona? Who's he? He's the coroner working the case. I need to ask him a few questions. Skalnik said he worked in an old chapel. Do you know where it is? Yes, I'll mark it on a map. I don't need a map. Just tell me where it is. What is it with men and directions? Take this map, it'll help you. I marked the location of the old chapel. It's not far from here. Okay. Thanks, sweetheart. Okay. I have to see this corona. 
I want you to stay off the streets as much as possible. Never walk around alone. Yes, I know you've told me a hundred times. I am careful. Okay, I'll ease up on you. You be careful. I will. Now go. I just realized something. Miller is pregnant. Plot twist. <laughs>